Hi, welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda, and today we have Brendan and Allison Turner with us. Greetings, guys. Hey, nice of you to stop by. You finally have your first album out. Ooh, yes. So, and you've been kind enough to bring vinyl, which uh -huh. is always a good thing. And it's some serious vinyl, because I... I so tell me about the uh, the process of getting it pressed. You don't mess around with vinyl. It's uh, it's, it's all or nothing it, yep. it, to make it to make it worth worthwhile doing. Um, we conceived that album right from the very beginning as being a vinyl album. You know, that was the sound that we wanted. That's what the 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 whole aesthetic of, of our style of music. You know, right. you know, comes from that that golden age of of, of recording stuff. So, you know, right from the beginning, it was it was analog all the way. We. Um, we recorded it at Revolver, um, done in, in, in Waiku, which is just a, a vintage gear playground. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, then it was it was mastered uh, for specifically for vinyl by a woman named Mandy Parnell. Um, she worked for uh, PJ Harvey and Nick Cave of mm. York. Um, yeah, again, like specialising in, in the, the good old old vintage stuff. Right. Finally off to, to Palace in Germany to be pressed onto audiophile grade, 180 gra um, gram, good old fashioned vinyl. Yeah, well that's probably why it took so long to get out. You had to yeah. save tons of money to put it out, oh. <laughs> I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. been quite a journey. Yeah. Yeah, um, apparently it's character building. Oh, that's <laughs> what they say. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got character? I seem uh, to require uh, more. Mm, I, I need more character. Yeah. Cause, and when did you start recording the record? Uh, October 2016. All right, so that's yeah. uh, almost three years yeah, ago. Mm. Yeah, so um, we booked four days in Revolver. Right. And, you know, it seems like such a long time because, you know, it's an eight-track album and we're doing it live. So we thought, four days, that's How heaps. long could it take? Yeah. How long could it possibly take? Turns out, mm. yeah, turns out it definitely takes that long. Yeah. And more. Yeah. Yeah, um, mm. yeah the yeah. fun part's over like that. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, they're it was really yeah. intense, but you know, it was really, really cool because it was a family affair. Right. So it's just me and B, and then my brother producing. Right. Um, so it was just the three of us in this really intense situation, working to all hours of the night mm. to get this done. It was really it cool. It was quite lucky for us that he worked at, at Revolver that you know, sort yeah. of made made some things possible there. Yeah. Mm. So, a few sort of blind eyes were turned to a few overly <laughs> late nights. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they gave us a, a lot of leeway. It's a magical but, place. Yeah, cool. We're very lucky. Well, I want to get to a song and then we'll just talk some yeah, more. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And we're going to hear, well, the, the name of the album is Ghost of a Friend. That's right. So we have the title track of you guys ready to perform it. So tell me about the song. Well, um, the the album itself is dedicated to Sam Preble. Um, right. I was, I was in Bond Street Bridge and yeah, we were there. Um, yeah, and so the songs were, were a, a chunk of the songs were written pretty much immediately afterwards. Um, we had basically traversed the whole country um, touring Bond Street Bridge, and there wasn't a, a single town that was that was left untouched or didn't hold, a, yeah, an association, a memory, an anecdote, a, a, a thing. Um, there's a long story that that goes into what happened in a town called Tamaranui. Right, but when we were um, uh, writing this, we were in Tamaranui, and I realized that pff, this was the scene of a crime. Right, right. Of a crime. <laughs> and it was like, man, get off my case. Ugh. And so we went home, um, and that song came out in pretty much 20 minutes, almost as long as it took just to, to, to play through. It was just right. straight, straight down. Um, mainly because I was, you know, ch channeling some Sam on that one, right. was, you know, writing a song as he would write it. Which you know does involve a bit of plagiarism. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was shocking for that, and so I unabashedly uh, don't hide from that on this okay. one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who, who do you think uh, might have been recalled in this one? Mm. I'm not going to say because if you hear it, then uh, you can't unhear it. <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> okay. But oh. it was basically there were two songs that um, we used to you know do a gig in the morning, um, gig at, at night when we're on tour, and in between we go busking. We'd always kick off with with one of uh, one or two songs. So it was a okay. A little bit from that, a little bit right, from we'll that. We'll see if anybody yeah. can figure it out. Yeah. Let's give it a listen and we'll come back and talk some more. <laughs> Ghost of a friend got me on the run. 
Ghost of a friend is a loaded gun Another mile of black tar Cinder in the sun Ghost of a friend is a loaded gun Can't even roll a window down Ghost of a friend drifts all around Can't even roll a window down Ghost of a friend roams every town Got my rattlesnake engine threatening to boil Ghost of a friend caught in the coil Gears in a grind, he's whining for oil Ghost of a friend caught in the coil Can't even roll a window down Ghost of a friend drifts all around Can't even roll a window down Ghost of a friend roams every town When every town you wish was different is the same Every town you wish was the same has changed Ghost of a friend got me running on in vain I can't even say his name Can't even roll a window down Ghost of a friend drifts all around can't even roll the window down Ghost of a friend roams every town Ghost of a friend roams every town Ghost of a friend roams every town Ghost of a friend Roams every Town. All right, we're back here with Brendan and Allison Turner. We just heard the title track to their debut album, Ghost of a Friend. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk some more about the making of the record. Now, I think, uh, wasn't there a night when you were at the tuning fork and something went horribly wrong? That was actually <laughs> the, the last night of, um, uh, of, of mixing. Um, we'd mixing the record. Mixing the record, so mm -hmm. everything was, was in that. <laughs> Yeah, tight, tight sort of space. It was right. recorded, mixed, mixed, and 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 the like. And and, and yeah, you were still doing a gig on top of it. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, we had a gig booked for the Friday. We, we night. weren't supposed to be there that night. Uh, yeah, like uh, it was supposed to be finished the night before, and right. um, of course, you know, yeah, reality just, uh, you know, just didn't didn't happen. So we're we're panicking, and Alison's like, oh, we've got to cancel, we've got to cancel. I'm like, no, we can't cancel a gig at the tuning fork. If we do that, we're done. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we went and came and, and, and played, uh, we were opening for the Cactus Blossoms and, and Lindy Ortega. That's right. I, we, there we were going, yeah, and that was a great night, we had a great time, and we actually hadn't slept, I literally had not slept in 48 mm. hours. And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I might have appeared drunk. You're I kind just, of swaying on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't, I really wish I was, but I wasn't. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and so we got off the stage like, yes, 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 cool, yeah, great, yeah, everything's going well, we've just finished our album, we've just done this gig, great, great, great. Phone call going, guys, you got to get back here because there's a pile of tape on the ground. Mm. And uh, the tape had snapped in, in the, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. So, you know, back to the studio to, to see what was, what's well, salvageable. Salvageable. Yeah. Salvageable. Yeah. Yeah. what was, what was there. Yeah. And luckily, um, we, we'd already bounced, bounced some digital off um, what was what was there, so right. we still had, we were still okay. We were still yeah, okay. Yeah. We made, made it through there. Um, yeah, but it was a dramatic. It was, ending, it was, yeah, it was, it was quite memorable. fitting. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Imagine what that's like. Uh, but anyway, it's finally out. Uh, we're gonna hear mm. another tune from the album. Uh, this one is "Long Low Whistle Blues." Mm. So what can you tell me about that one? Oh, that was an interesting process actually writing that one. I think it's kind of one of the few songs on the album that we 
really kind of deliberately collaborated on. Like we kind of had an idea of writing. This so do you song. usually write together or separately? Pretty much separately, eh? Like. Yeah, um, you, you're yeah, about to say something, they, aren't you? you know, yeah. like um, we, we we say uh, one of us will, one of us will catch it, the other one will kill it. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. He usually he, Brendan usually catches it, and uh -huh. I usually cook it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll kill it. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Through the editing process and just the refining. Um, right. yeah. That one was a real sit down and, and knock something out. And basically, because a lot of the you know uh, we're, we're not showing from it, a lot of the the. Yeah, subjects. It's, it's it's a heavy lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a serious lesson. You listen. Um, we just want to throw in some just you know like cliches a little bit. You know, mm. just to lighten the tone. Um, so yeah, and of course you know you can't have a a, a, a country folk um, blues album without something referring to a train. Of course not. It's, you know, what like, would Johnny Cash say? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They'll, they'll they'll revoke your um your union card and, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, drive you out of town. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, we, we, we did that one. Um, a lot of the, the lyric is basically sort of drawing on, yeah, not quite really fitting in, uh, in a music scene uh -huh. <laughs> in a town. Yeah, like sort of being a little bit of an outsider. To, okay. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, for, yeah, reasons of your own making. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, we'll give it a listen and we'll discuss that further. Yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> Let's not discuss that here. <laughs> <laughs> Spike into my head, mock time by train call, sun sick and red. Come that long old whistle blow, we all owe God a death. Now hail from a green life, pure as a pine, certain as a jail cell and cotton on the line. Neon holy glow, bend the signal fire. From that long low whistle blow, it pushed me through the turnstile. But in that cruel machine, they don't like my kind. Broken down and bloodshot, wasted all the time. Big wheels they moan, little wheels they whine. Come that long the whistle blow, this wreck is on the line. Spike into my head, mock time by train call, sun sick and red. Come that long the whistle blow, we all owe God a death. here with Brendan and Allison Turner. We're talking about the country rock, acoustic blues music scene and mm. in Auckland and elsewhere. And I was just at this uh, uh, introducing Nashville gig last night at the Tuning Fork. Mm. And it got me thinking about the difference between the country music audience and the Americana audience and, uh, and how they seem to be different, but they shouldn't be that different. And uh, so thoughts about that from you guys. What's your opinion about it? Well. We, we, you know, we're happy to, to go with the Americana label or right. country folk blues or, or whatever. You know, basically those those labels I think are you know checking metadata 
boxes and, mm. and you know, categories. Yep. But for us, I think the, the music that really lights us up tends to usually blur genres. Right. Um, mm. I get a little bit bored when blues sounds like blues and country sounds like country and bluegrass sounds like bluegrass. You know, I, I want to hear cross pollination and, and, and the like. Um, yeah, like some of my, uh, my favorite players, like Roscoe Holcomb, for example, is a, an old timey um, uh, banjo frailing, you know, high lonesome sound voice, sounds pure appellation until he plays, you know, the guitar and plays some blues, and then it's our, our, basically our Al Burnside Delta stuff. Right. Sort of stuff. Mm. Um, I like that that mixing of, of thing, and I think down here in New Zealand, we're we're sort of we're limited a little bit by um, by there aren't these you know, sustaining scenes, like a, not a bluegrass scene where lots of bluegrass can, players can play and do festivals and country and the like. Um, but I think that kind of gives us a, a bit of a strength within that uh, to make something a bit more New Zealand. Right. Um, you have to kind of pick a mix and you get influenced by different things. And mm. What do you think? Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. you've said that yeah. very well. I think the, 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 the genre itself um, is there was always a musical diaspora that went into creating it in the first place. Um, you know, um, it's you know classic American songs in in, in the tradition, like say "House of the Rising Sun." Mm -hmm. Well, that's a British song. You know, it was a house in Soho Town. Mm -hmm. um, uh, house Carpenter, another another one. Um, uh, Saint James Infirmary Blues. Well, Saint James Infirmary was 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 in England, and so there was a diaspora coming across there. So yep. it coming here. Yeah. Mm. Makes sense. Ghost of a Friend is about a cafe in Tomaranu. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> uh, speaking of Tomaranu, so you guys are going on a pretty major tour to, to yeah. promote the album. Nin 19 yes. dates? Yeah. Basically. Looking yes. forward to it? I get on the, oh, I can't been... wait to get on the road. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what we live for, eh? Right? Just you know, that's the point. I pack mean, up the Corolla and. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> One day it'll be like a Charger or something, yeah. but right now it's a Corolla. We've and been, been, been off the yeah. myself, so yeah. We've been off the road while we've been getting that together, and it just took longer than we expected, and right. so it's been a long time between drinks. But yet, um, we like to say that you know we, we share the, the same mental affliction, and that we actually enjoy driving long distances oh, that's, that's to yeah. thing. play folk that's music to small amounts of people for very little money. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That'll be the dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're living it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, we got one more song. Picture from the Frame is mm. the last tune that we're going to hear from you guys. Tell me about that one. Mm. So um, basically, I mean, yeah, as, as we've alluded to, there was a lot of heartbreak going, going on there, and we just tried to siphon that and put it in a different context mm -hmm. and just write a song. Um, I was playing in Bernie Griffin's band um, for about two, two years and you know, like that had a real influence on me in terms of, of you know, the, the lyric content that he'd do and the songs that he would pull and, and, and the like and just a, a real love of just straight down the line, get it down to two verses and a chorus, bam, right. so, sort of thing. Did kind of lift a line from him, but yeah, you know, that's, <laughs> that's between us. <laughs> Sorry, Bernie. <laughs> um, yeah. All righty. Yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by. Good Thank luck on the you. tour. Good Thank luck you. with the record. Thank you very much. And we'll listen to a picture from the frame. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Maddie. Bye bye. And 
God damn my eyes get out damn spot A horn in a square sunlight for God We took all our hand No that's not a lot Threw it in the trash with a splintered box And I took your picture from the frame And I scratched the tattoo of your name There ain't no getting out that stain And I took your picture from the frame And I scratched the tattoo of your name There ain't no getting out that stain And this room is empty once again Since I took your picture from the frame